I was recently speaking to a pretty awesome up and coming designer. We were just chatting through some design ideas and as the conversation progressed, we moved on to the tools we use and Figma popped up. At that point, we both got really excited about the new feature they just released. We both stopped because we then realized and we'd kind of forgotten about what we do as designers. In this video, I'm gonna talk through why using Figma might not be as important as you think. We often get lost in the new things the tools we use every day can do. Self-driving cars, smartwatches, VR headsets, automated vacuum cleaners, robots with AI, and the new 8,000 megapixel iPhone 54. And for Figma specifically, design systems and variables and intricate animations and code generation, the list goes on. Don't get me wrong, I love Figma and all that it does, but I have to remind myself that it's not about the bells and whistles or the cool new feature they've just released. And as designers, we get distracted by shiny things quite easily. Squirrel. But where Figma does shine is how it enables you as a designer to solve problems as quickly and efficiently as possible and how it allows you to communicate those problems with other people to come up with potential solutions. Figma is just a tool though. It won't make you a better designer. To become a better designer, start thinking about the fundamentals of design outside of Figma too. Things like design thinking and human-centered design, graphic design and color theory, typography, and responsive design. With some of these core principles under your belt, everything you do in Figma will be so much better. And you don't have to learn them all at once. Take one thing today and start learning a little bit about it. The way I think about Figma is it's a tool to communicate your design decisions to a variety of people with a diversity of backgrounds. These people are often called stakeholders, not the vampire hunter type stakeholder, but rather the people who have a co-ownership or stake in the project that you're working on. That could be a product manager or a software developer. It could be someone in the marketing department or in the sales team. It could be a business owner you're doing some work for, or it could even be your cousin with that amazing new startup idea. If we stop and take a look at Figma's vision, you can see it ties in pretty well to that concept to make design accessible for everyone. So it's less about the amazing things you can do with variables and components and design systems. All of those things are amazing though. And more about how that specific feature enables you to communicate your ideas so they're understood quickly and correctly. I personally use Figma on a daily basis to express my ideas and communicate design decisions to various stakeholders. I use it for things like a wireframe I might need some feedback on or sharing a high fidelity design with the rest of the UX team, or to test user flows with real users. To explain and show how a specific interaction might work to some developers, to create and maintain a shared library of brand assets that will be used across the company, or to iterate and collect feedback as quickly as possible. All of these bits of work are the problems we're trying to solve, and Figma is a great tool for enabling you to do that. As a designer, it's very unlikely that you'll be working in isolation all the time. So your ability to communicate effectively is key. Use Figma for that. Figma is a great tool that allows you to communicate solutions to the problems that you're trying to solve. And to do that, you have to have a good understanding of the people you're trying to solve those problems for, the people you have to work with to accomplish that, and the design principles behind all your decisions. So Figma is an important tool if your goal is to communicate your ideas to as many people as quickly as possible. This reframing of why you want to use Figma will hopefully make you stop and think and give all your future learning with the tool purpose and direction. Hopefully your goals are focused on the problems you're trying to solve and how the specific Figma feature you're trying to learn helps solve that problem. Next time you're trying to learn something that Figma does, think about why. For example, I want to learn how to create a color palette in Figma so I can easily update and change colors in all of my designs. Or I want to create a component using variables so I can maintain consistency and speed up my workflow. But don't try and learn all of these things at once. Choose a specific area that will help solve your problem and dive right in. Even if Figma is just a tool, it's still a very powerful one. And there are loads of people still learning it out there. To see what they're learning about, check out this video here. See you soon.